This subject of I'm going to speak about right now is based on one of the axioms, one of the hallmarks of my teachings. It's a phrase that if you know me, you've heard the phrase, nothing outside of self exists. It is a very huge and important universal principle and one which very few people really understand. Some get it intellectually, but it's, it's, it's really the core of spirituality and spiritual growth leading you toward liberation, toward enlightenment. Now, the premise of this, nothing outside of self exists, is based on the fact that each human being, me, you, you are, as I am, the epicenter. You're the sun in your whole reality, in your whole universe. And everything and everyone, every human being, let's say, for instance, just take humanity. All human beings are the seven billion aspects or reflections of you your divinity, your non-divinity, your greatness, your strengths, your weaknesses, everybody, your personalities, your behaviors, everyone is reflecting aspects of you. So picture like a human being as this giant crystal that has seven billion facets on it. And so each one of those facets is, is part of you and it's teaching you. Now, hand in hand with that, everything exists in this world and everything happens to you solely for the purpose of your God realization, about your emancipation, your liberation from this mantle of separation, this delusion of separation that we all have been born into and live under and within. So, and being the epicenter of your universe, you are the writer, director, producer, actor, you know, the editor, the post-production team. You are the whole thing. You're all roles, all parts. And you as the co-creator with God of your life, of your spiritual journey, you create wanted, needed, chosen, created every single thing that ever happens to you was cre created by you because your soul wanted it, needed it, and chose it for the purpose of helping you fulfill your divine blueprint to, to realize and restore your own inherent divinity to walk as gods and goddesses on this planet. Um, as some beautiful beings have done in the past, have modeled people like Buddha and Jesus and, and Mother Mary and many, many others, Krishna. So living from this concept is a, gives you a great sense of empowerment that you can see when something happens, you immediately look to see, number one, why did I create this? Why did I magnetize this experience into my life? For instance, I'll give you the examples. You have a car accident. Someone plows into the side of your car. And most people would say, oh, you hit me. You're at fault. It's your fault. Well, no. You drove into yourself using someone else's car. You needed the life experience of someone plowing into you to teach you what. So the first is, why did I create this? What is this asking of me? What is this telling me? Why did I need it? What is it teaching me? What is it asking of me? How is this inviting me to become greater love? Because everything is about, we're all ascending into higher and higher frequencies of love as we restore our divinity. Therefore, every single circumstance, every word that anyone says to you is actually your own soul speaking to you using someone else as a mouthpiece. Every event and circumstance that happens is you doing it to yourself using other instruments and vehicles to teach yourself, to become greater love, to expand your consciousness. You see, because the only, we come into this world with nothing and we leave with nothing, but there is one asset we take with us when we leave this world and that's the evolution of our consciousness. And when you leave your embodiment, the very first thing you look at when you reflect and review on your, your tenure in this classroom, I call Earth God's classroom, the very first and most important and really the only thing you look at is um, are all the many opportunities and invitations that the universe sent you at your request to become greater love. And you look at which ones did I accept, which ones did I decline, which ones did I avoid, escape, neglect, repress, which ones did I master, which ones were successful, which ones I didn't, did I not do so well in attaining or in realizing or in becoming victorious. And you reflect on those. Which, where did I act out of love? Where did I act out of fear, out of non-love? And, and that's how you reflect on your life. So this nothing outside of self concept is so, so empowering. And without it, 
there's very, very little spiritual growth that ever can really happen. Um, I mean, that's the long and short of it, really. This is where you come from the place. This is where you can make the fastest spiritual growth and evolution by taking that stance and viewing your world in that way. And that way you move through your life lessons like this and you evolve. You get back on your horse every time you fall. You learn what you needed to learn. You thank the parties involved. You make restitution where necessary. It, you know, it involves a certain level of maturity, of accountability, that I created everything in my life. No one is to blame. And if there's nothing outside of self, if no one really exists, see, hand in hand with this it's the end, comes the understanding that the entire world and everyone and everything in it is a hologram of thought form made manifest for this purpose because we were given these five primary senses and, some, and many higher faculties with which we can discern and study and learn and practice becoming our true divine selves. And so <clears throat> having had that um, understanding, I now would be much better able to see what I can change and apply to become greater love.